Good evening, and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Thank you for joining me. Reverend Wes Allen and Jen and their children are away for a few days this week. This evening, we pray for our congregation and our community with special emphasis on praying for what I consider to be a gospel-rooted concern, that is, for God's desire to see healing and reconciliation happen between people, particularly among the races. So I thank you that you've joined me tonight in prayer. That you're praying tonight around this important matter, you may want to follow up by participating in a book study that Reverend Allen and my wife, Dr. Leslie Spencer, will be leading. It begins this coming week. The study is about a book written by Jonathan Augustine. It's called Called to Reconciliation, How the Church Can Model Justice, Diversity, and Inclusion. Augustine challenges the church at a pivotal moment in history to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. In the book, he argues that the church's work of reconciliation that he says is salvific in both the social and civic as well as the personal realms is a model for our society during a time of heightened division and polarization between people and groups. You can register for this class by going to our events page on our website. You'll see registration information there. I believe that the class is going to be offered twice, beginning this coming Sunday the 24th. This Friday, tomorrow night, we'll have our first Fire Pit Friday. Elder Cheryl Gaskell and her family are hosting us. We have a new fire pit that was created by one of our young people for his Eagle Scout project, Evan Livingston. And so beginning this coming Friday from 6 until 9 p.m., you can come to our large parking lot and you'll see where the fire pit is. The Gaskells are going to provide the marshmallows, bring a chair if you like, and come and just enjoy the fellowship of our church family and friends. I also want to invite you to another event that's taking place this Saturday. It's hosted by our friends from the Arabic uh, fellowship group that meets in our church and has been a part of our ministry for many years. This Saturday, the 24th of July, from 4.30 in the afternoon until 8.30 in the evening, outside on our lawns, Arabic Fellowship will be providing uh, music from the region of, of um, from the Middle East and games and food. Uh, they would love to have us come, and I'm planning on going. I hope to see you there. The food does have a price to it, but it's not very much, and I know most of all they'll just love to see us join them for this time of fellowship this coming Saturday from 4.30 into 8.30. Our Way of the Week this week is number nine, Pray First and Pray Again. Our Way video presenter is Melissa Corbin. After you hear Melissa's excellent presentation, we'll hear from Frank Mitchell, who sings the great spiritual, I Know the Lord Has Laid His Hand on Me. Frank has a testimony to share that relates to the song that he'll sing. Let's listen first to Melissa and then to Frank. Hi, I'm Melissa Corbin, and I am a member. Way number nine is pray first and pray again. Ask first for God's guidance and blessing in everything you do. Through prayer, ask for wisdom and for God's will to be done. Pray for others as well, that God's love and blessing would be revealed to them in good times and in bad. Way number nine is especially important to me because I have found my daily prayer practice to be a crucial component of my day. When we look in the Bible at the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see example after example of God's people praying to him, communicating with him, and being in relationship with him. When we think of our own relationships, I think of the people that I communicate with the most frequently, my spouse, my children, my coworkers, good friends. And it's those people with whom I have the most frequent communication, with whom I have the closest relationships. 
And the same is true with God. God desires a personal relationship with each of us. I find it amazing and awe-inspiring that God, who created heaven and earth, created you and me, desires to have a personal relationship. And just like a child goes to their parent asking for things, expressing fears, expressing sorrows, God wants us to come to him like the children. We don't need to have eloquent words. God wants us to come as we are. God wants our prayers to uniquely reflect the people that he's created us to be. Many years ago, I did not have a daily prayer practice. My prayer life was kind of sporadic, and I had a friend here who encouraged me to find five minutes in each day for a week and to pray. I quickly found that it was easy to find five minutes, even though before I didn't feel like I had the time. And that starting my day in prayer just set the tone for the entire day. That five minutes quickly flew by and increased each day. I now try to get up before the rest of my family to have a date with God each morning. And I find that the mornings that something happens that I don't get to do that, I feel that the foundation for my day has not been set. I encourage you today, if you don't have a daily prayer practice, to begin one. Just find three to five minutes in your day. It could be in the morning, it could be at night, it could be in a car ride, during a commute, or perhaps while you're waiting somewhere. And just start talking to God. Talk to him sincerely with what's on your mind and what's on your heart. God is there to listen to you and to answer your prayers. And he wants us to seek him and he wants us to pray to him. So I encourage you today to start praying and pray first above all else and pray again and again. And that is way number nine. Pray first and pray again. sustained a full thickness tear of my rotator cuff. I had an MRI about six weeks ago and it it confirmed that it was a full thickness tear. So I have a very good surgeon and he said the only thing that we can do for you is to perform surgery. So I just had that surgery done on July the 7th. After the surgeon performed the surgery, uh, I was sitting in the recovery room And he said, "Uh, Mr. Mitchell, I have something to tell you, great news. And so I I said, well, okay, I'm waiting for it. And he said, when I looked into your shoulder arthroscopically, I found that the rotator cuff had healed. And so I said, are you sure? He said, yes, I didn't touch your rotator cuff. You had a lot of bursitis and arthritis. And he said, I'm diagnosing you with the frozen shoulder, which is much easier to uh, rehab. So I asked him, I said, well, are you sure? And he said, well, in my, in my practice, I've only seen 5% or less of people with full thickness tears have it repaired without surgery. So that is a miracle, a miracle still happen. Amen. And this song is entitled, I Know the Lord Has Laid His Hands on Me. And I'm here to tell you this morning, that I know the Lord has laid his hands on me. Hands on me. 
Did ever you see the like before? I know the Lord's laid his hands on me. King Jesus preaching to the poor. I know the Lord's laid his hands on me. Oh, I know. hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord laid his hands on me. Oh, wasn't that a happy day? I know the Lord laid his hands on Washed my sins away. I know the Lord laid his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord laid his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord, I know. Tonight, as we prepare to pray, listen to this portion of Scripture from the beginning of Psalm 17. O Lord, hear my prayer for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. As we pray over these important matters about racial reconciliation, we are praying in tune with God's heartbeat for justice. Before we pray, two things I want to share with you, and I'll invite you to pray with me for them in just a moment. Late last week, we received news of the death of Bob Blyler. Bob died on Friday, the 15th of July. Bob had been living in, uh, in Newtown, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, near his family. The funeral service for Bob was held on Monday at the Lewis Funeral Home, followed by a committal service in our sanctuary. Bob Blyler uh, was, I think, one of our longest tendered members. His membership uh, was more than 60 years, and I know he was a friend to many. We rejoice in Bob's life and the legacy of faith that he has, he has left for us. On Tuesday, I received an email from Kelly and Luke Maxted. Many of you will remember the Maxteads. They we're here in our area at Urban Promise as fellows for two years. We also came to know and love their two boys, Reuben and Judah. The Maxsteads are now in London trying to establish uh, Urban Promise there, and they're doing a fantastic job. Well, as you know, the, uh, Europe has been experiencing terrible heat, and Luke wrote to ask that we pray for him, for his family, and for London. Luke wrote this. You may have seen in the news that the UK is having a heat wave. Temperatures today have been at a high of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, with some parts of the country recording the highest temperatures in British history. While these temperatures are normal for many parts of the United States, we are not set up to deal with such heat, and this has resulted in an outbreak of fires across the country. There have been a huge number of fires in our area around Dangingham in East London, including just for today. Houses are burning down and people are being displaced in droves, Luke writes. This afternoon, the sports center that Kelly's mom works in shut down because to become a relief center for those homes that are uninhabitable. Please pray for safety for our community, for protection for the emergency services, and for wisdom for community leaders and compassion among neighbors in these very difficult days. Friends, let us pray about these matters, and then we'll turn to praying for racial healing and reconciliation that God would bring and that God might use us to that end. Remember, friends, we pray together. 
And if you want to pause this service to pray longer over any of these matters, please do and then push play to return to the service. Let's pray as God's people. Lord, you promise us that the sun will not smite us by day because you are our help. And in the midst, Lord, of the challenges and really the crises that our world and our nation face, you are our help. The psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Lord, we say that our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. And so we turn to you, Lord, with the needs that we carry for our loved ones, for ourselves, for this church, but also for our community. Lord, tonight we thank you for Bob Lyler, and we rejoice, Lord, that he now is in your presence and he'll dwell there forever. Thank you for his life, for his clowning ministry, where he reached and touched many lives at Cooper Hospital. Lord, we pray for his family, for his son Scott, as he grieves his father's death, along with many others who have loved this man. Lord, we pray with and for Kelly and Luke Maxted and their boys. Lord, would you keep them safe during this intense heat? Would you use them, Lord, for they are ones who desire to allow the light of Christ to shine through them. So please do, we pray. We ask that you'll support leaders throughout Europe, those who are trying to provide relief and comfort from the heat, and that, Lord, there would be a spirit of understanding and compassion among the people there, and may they have that for their neighbors. Lord, we pray for those within our own region on this very hot week. God, give us compassion and care for those who might need support. Lord, we now turn to the matters of praying around race, racial reconciliation. To the Father of every family on earth, to Jesus, the great reconciler, to the Holy Spirit, healer of our broken hearts. Have mercy. We bow our knees before you. We thank you that in your love you bring sin into light. Forgive us as a nation for the darkness of division and racism that exists in our cities, our neighborhoods, our churches, and in our view of one another. Have mercy, Lord, upon us. Merciful God, carve humility in our souls. Pour the oil of your spirit into our pain, fear, and confusion. Today, empower us to move toward each other in compassion, quickness to listen, and honor for the sacredness of every image-bearing human being. Give us courage to boldly uncover oppression and grace to hear each other's pain regarding race. We reject both division and denial. We reject the devaluing of human life. Father, you've given us the ministry of reconciliation, and we cry out to you for guidance and steps to take. Keep us, Lord, from defeatism as well, because we do thank you for changes and progress that we have seen occur in our nation by your grace. Lead us by your Spirit. Lord, awaken humble conversations between neighbors and friends across this country. Wash our relationships with healing. Rebuild trust that's been broken and protect our existing bridges of connection. We join your prayer, Jesus, in John 17. Make us one with each other and with you. Give us the endurance and the commitment that it takes to do the hard work of true unity. Jesus, the one who knows our humanity, the one who weeps with us over the brokenness that is all around us, help us to follow you on the narrow road of love.
Lord, we pray together as your people in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the one who has taught us when we pray as disciples to pray simply. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for praying with me tonight. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen.